Peace and Pan Africanism. Peace and Pan Africanism. Peace and Pan Africanism. This is Baba Gua Lori, Chief of Pan Africanism. Where my Maryland Africans at? Where my DC Africans at? Where my ramen noodle Africans at? Where my burnt hot dog Africans at? Where my Kool-Aid with too much sugar Africans at? Where my Krispy Kreme donut Africans at? Huh? Where my Tiger Mart Africans at? Huh? Where my shoppers Africans at? Where my prime Amazon Africans at? Where my boy Cotton Target Africans at? Where am I stealing from Walmart Africans at? Where my blue crab Africans at? Peace and Pan-Africanism. Peace and Pan-Africanism. Listen, if you want to give you an update on the FDMG, solar power, water borehole systems for the Africans, huh? Solar power, water for boys. FDMG, solar power, water system for boys. I just want to give y'all an update. King Kong, a pan-Africanism. Just want to give y'all an update. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just messing with you. I'm hey, I just want to give y'all my, all my, all my donators <laughs> an update. <laughs> hey, hit the cash app, hit the PayPal, huh? Hit the cash app and the PayPal and send them checks in the mail. Yeah, FDMD, solar power. Water ball hole system for boys! <laughs> anyway, alright. Alright, enough joking around. Hey, I just want to give y'all an update. A little video. Because I know some people want to see what's happening, right? So I do the best I can. You know, some people, y'all think I'm in Africa. I'm not I'm in Maryland. You see that big ass tree? Alright, the tree. Look, when I bought this house, that tree was small. I should have cut that motherfucker. I ain't gonna lie, I should have cut it. That junk grew like shit. And then I got this other tree, right? This big old tree right here. That's my neighbor's tree. Yo, he got these vines. Listen, it takes over my backyard. It's all over here. Like these damn parasitic vines. They just they just take over everything. I got these vines on the tree over there. Let me show you. Look at that. That's ridiculous. Right? I don't know what to do about that. Like that's what the tree's supposed to look like. Right? The whole neighborhood is like that. I used to be able to see back here. That's why y'all think I'm in Africa. Alright? But Maryland's very green. Alright? Very, very green. Right? Y'all never know. I like it like that, though. Y'all never know where I'm at. I be in Africa. I be in America. Y'all don't know. Huh? That's why I like it. But anyway, I wanted to give y'all an update. So I got some videos. I had some people shoot me some videos so you can see the structure. Right? We got the solar panels. You'll see the solar panels. We got the 300 liter uh, water storage tank. We've built the concrete. I'm getting the security irons done right now. You'll see that in the video. Just a quick thing so you can get a visual where your money at. All right? Because... Unlike other people who, you know, only show you gyms and outside across the street of abandoned buildings, I'm going to do the best I can to show you where your money went. It's almost done. But like I said, you know, weather permits since we're doing everything in concrete and, and all that other stuff. But all material has been bought. I had the pump. I had to, I had to get a new pump. So I had to get the pump that goes with the solar panel. Right, so you'll see that in the videos in the box. It's sitting in the house. These solar panels are big as hell, so I didn't know they was gonna be that big. So we got some good solar panels. So all the wiring is done. I got the plumber coming in because once they put the water storage, you know, they gotta connect. You know, I don't. I'm not a plumber. All right, I'm not a plumber. I'm not. I'm not an iron worker. I'm not none of that. All right, so I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to tell you what's going on, but I don't really know. I just know I'm giving them the money and they doing it. All right, that's just what it is. But anyway, without further ado, check this out so I can see what's going on. And of course, once it's complete, y'all gonna see everything, all right? Anyway, oh yeah, and thank you again, everybody. This is your work. This is real Pan-Africanism, all right? This is what Pan-Africanism looks like. Doing something for somebody else without seeking anything in return, okay? And in turn, somebody will may maybe do something for you without them seeking something in return, because Pan-Africanism is very simple and easy. Do for your brother. Period. Now, if your, if your neighbor is your brother, do for your brother. Your neighbor is your brother. Do for your sister. Your sister is your neighbor. Do for your sister. Do for your children. The children of your village 
if they're not your biological children, but they are in your village, do for them as if they are your children. Do for your grandmother and your mother. If they're elderly and they and, and or they're older than you and they're in your village, do for them like you would do for your mother. And then somebody will do for your mother as if it was their mother. Do for your father and your grandfather and respect them the way you would do for your father and your grandfather, even if that guy's not your father and your grandfather. That way, the next man will do and respect your grandfather the way you respect your grandfather. Be a community. Be a family. Be nice to each other. Do something for somebody without expecting somebody to do, you know, to give you something. And then somebody will do for you without expecting you to do something for them. Pan-Africanism is simple. It's a very easy concept. Be a family. Be a community the way black folks are meant to be. The way we are naturally. That's it. Nothing special. Nothing high tech. Nothing we can't do. I'm tired of hearing people say, is Pan-Africanism going to work? What you mean? If I go and help my brother, is it going to work? If my brother helped me, is it going to work? As long as you're not going somewhere to exploit. And, and sidebar, I heard this video. These people were talking about Pan-Africanism. And their lady said, how can, if the Sudanese, would the Sudanese accept African-Americans or the African diaspora to come over there, you know, under the guise of Pan-Africanism? And one of the persons said, well, the Sudanese, all, all politics is local, all issues are local, which is true. He said, why would they want that when they got their own issues? Well, and, and that's, that's to me, that's complicating the situation. If African Americans or if the diaspora is going to Sudan, right, to benefit themselves, the thing that they're going to do should also benefit the people of Sudan. So if the people of Sudan are suffering, right, and then they're inviting African Americans or diaspora to come in, it should be under the guise that they're going to do something that's going to benefit the people of Sudan. Right. Meaning building institutions and structures for the people of Sudan. Right. And then that means they would everybody would benefit is is really a simple concept. When you go to an African country, do something that benefits the people. Bring value. What are you? What was that thing? Them, the manosphere and rail, rail pill always talking about. They was talking about. Yeah. Well, what's the woman going to bring to the table? Huh? What's the woman going to bring to the table? And sometimes when be like, I, I ain't got to bring nothing to the table. I am the table. And sometimes the men be like. I'm the table. Like, listen, all right? We are all the table and we are all the chairs. We all got to provide the substance that goes on the table. And then we can all sit together and enjoy the substance on the table, okay? So when you go to a country, all right? An, another African country. Now, if they're economically less fortunate than you, guess what? They have assets that you don't have even though they may be economically less fortunate than you. But they are asset rich, and you, because you're going over there, clearly are asset poor. Therefore, you utilize their assets, right? And you make sure they benefit from your economic prosperity. That way, everybody can eat on the table and we can get full together. That's how it works. So when you go to an African country, whatever business that you create should benefit the local people. Whatever you do should benefit the local people. And I guarantee you, the local people will benefit you. As they will be assets to you. Work together. That's it. That's simple. Pan-Africanism. Global. Black. That's all it means. To be a black person. Viewing your fellow black person. On the globe. As family. And treating them. Like your brother and sister. Mother and father. Grandmother and grandfather. Respect and honor. Care and empathy. That is it. And if you got a problem. With pan-Africanism and you think that is too complicated to work for you then you sir or ma'am have internal issues and personal problems right that you need to deal with and you need to do some introspection if you think pan-Africanism is such a difficult task anyway without further ado check out you know the update things getting built almost done and once again thank you everybody who participated and contributed to this solar power water bowl system that will provide fresh and clean water for needy people in a village who needs it. Anyway, that's all I gotta say. It's Afro Think Tank, learn some teach them. I'm out. Okay, everybody. So what we got here is a concrete platform. At first, it was going to be all steel, but I, they recommended using concrete because in this area, is particular. It can be particularly windy. Therefore, concrete is much, more, much more solid and much more capable. Of course, you already know. Y'all seen the video where we had where we had the big old um, digging truck the well truck and they dug the huge well it went it's going down a thousand feet so we got a lot of thousand feet worth of piping 
you know, worth a PVC pipe, you know, down there already. And here's the platform. Everything is dried. Of course, next we got to, after we do this, we're going to put a security gate. You can see some of that iron sitting there on the side, which will make the security gate to go around it so we can lock it up because human beings are human beings. So you want to make sure nothing gets stolen. That's the rest of my land right there that you see that I placed it on. And so you see the scaffolding, the, the, the water tank will go on the top and the solar panels will go, you know, obviously go up there somewhere. These are the solar panels. They are humongous. I didn't think they were going to be that big because some of the solar panels that I see other people using are not as big, but those are big. So these and these solar panels come with the pump. So the pump and the solar panels are meant to work together. Therefore, we're not going to have any issues getting the water out of the ground with these solar panels. I think there's like four or six right there. And you'll see here uh, that that's the pump right there that goes with the solar panels. So we are good to go. This was the most expensive part that we had to pay for. This is a 3000 liter uh, water tank. This should definitely do the trick. Every time it runs out, we'll just fill it up. And so we don't need to have too many tanks. That tank would do the trick as you know, the well is large enough to continue to fill it up. So that's the update. Thanks everybody for your donations. I'm out. Free Sudan, boycott diamonds and gold. Free Sudan, boycott diamonds and gold. We most deeply cannot forget about the people of Sudan. Thanks for watching Afro Think Tank. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And follow me on Substack and Patreon for more content. Remember, it's pan-Africanism or nothing. <laughs>